The number of times that I have spoken to agents that say, I don't want to submit an offer because I don't want to get into multiples. The problem is, is that everyone gets so bloody emotionally attached, not rightfully so. Uh, and then, and then the, the, you know, the carpet gets pulled out from under their feet. Oh, you didn't get it. You're listening to Rambling Realtors with Andrew Roach and Ross Bridges. Tune in each week for in-depth conversations on all the latest real estate trends and the thriving West End GTA markets. Go beyond the real estate world as Andrew and Ross share personal and professional experiences to help you find your way home. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Andrew, how are you, buddy? I'm good, Ross. Thanks uh, so much for asking. It's been a little while. I mean, uh, first and foremost, like the summer has absolutely blown by. I can't even believe that like September is in like a week. That just blows my mind. You could, if you, if you told me that it was like, it's going to be August soon, I wouldn't believe. Right? Totally right. Like August flew by. It was, it's been a hot frenzy of uh, an August. And I, so tell me you've been at the track quite a bit. You're, you're preparing your, uh, your son to be the next Paul Tracy of Canada. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, maybe a uh, Gilles Villeneuve, right? So to be, <laughs> to be in Formula One. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, my son, my son races go-karts. He's, uh, he's pretty competitive. Uh, we had, uh, this past weekend, we had a national race. So it was the, the Canadian karting ca- uh, championship, uh, held in Mossport, uh, uh, just last weekend. So I was there from, I went up, I went up Tuesday morning, uh, uh, practice started Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then races uh, actually Friday was qualifying. Uh, and then we had races Saturday, Sunday. Um, so it was, uh, it was a very long and busy week, but, um, yeah, pretty much every weekend, man, like on just about every weekend we're at the track. I mean, the, 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 the karting industry didn't, didn't want to like lose money because of COVID, right. There's only so many, so many weeks in the summer. So when we lost, I think a month or a month and a half at the beginning of the summer, they just compressed the schedule into whatever time was left. So it's, it's go, go, go this year, man. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. I think it's pretty cool how dedicated you are with your son to doing that. I know uh, a lot of the times we've been trying to find show times, but I, I, you know, we got to put family first with everything we've gone through in the last, uh, in the last couple of years. So that's, that's so cool. I look forward to hearing how he's doing in competitions in the, uh, in the weeks and years ahead. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely difficult. It would be, it would be quite the challenge to record from the track. <laughs> um, you don't always get a good signal like even if you were to just you know just do it over the phone or whatever oh. you don't always get a good signal what <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah hats off to jason for uh, having to edit that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah right zoom, zoom 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 no um i was lucky enough to go down to an argos game for uh went down last saturday uh with my dear friend lisa and uh, it was it was a cool experience just to get back out BMO Field. There, I mean, the crowd wasn't massive; it was probably four or five thousand. Right. But uh, when they kicked the field goals after, there's like an open uh, walking area where you can get a chance to go get the football. So I was proud enough to get the second football, give it to her. So it was okay. the game within the game. But I wanted to say a special shout out to uh, to Jay's fans and to Argos fans. Uh, rock whatever you can find raptors coming back to toronto this year so let's get out and support our uh our local uh, teams or any sport for that matter whether it's uh cart or whatever your your choice of sport may be yeah definitely nice to get back out again um absolutely you know it's uh, we're, we're actually pretty fortunate in the karting world um that we never got lo- like fully locked down because it's it's an outdoor sport naturally um and, you know, the drivers have a helmet on, so they're, you know, they're running, you know, um, uh, with, you know, face, face protection the whole time. Uh, and then furthermore, like when you're, when you're done, you're back at your tent, um, you know, your individual tent or whatever, right? So they, they certainly limited numbers. You weren't allowed to have guests and stuff like that and, and, and whatnot. But, um, but we were fortunate enough to not really ever really get locked down per se. Um, like I said, at the beginning there, like the beginning of the season did get compressed. They weren't allowing motorsports or anything like that until they opened it up uh, to, to phase two. But last year, you know, they didn't have those phases per se. Right. So um, yeah, it was, um, but it's, it's, it's good to be able to still have that and, and see people and, you know, and more importantly, I think for the, 
for the kids, right. To, to be able to be out there and doing something and, and being around their kids, even if other kids, even if they can't, you know, you know, play like normal, at least they can kind of just socialize, you know, with their helmets on or just see other people, whatever. So that's, it, it was crucial. Get out there, be active, compete. Totally. Right. Like I, I hear of a few of my friends now they're starting to get uh, out to some concerts. So Crazy to think. I mean, I don't think of concerts and social distancing, but it's nice to know that uh, things are definitely uh, opening up, right? So, uh, you yeah, know, that, that's also, get... I think the social distancing thing kind of went out the window a little bit. <laughs> you know, outdoors, good. Like... good. I don't. I don't know how much we could be promoting that on our podcast, but good. Hey, hey just an observation, man. I'm not. I'm not. You know, leaning one way or the other. It, it's just you know, they're uh, that two meters apart uh, definitely was not happening uh, everywhere. On a, on a side note, now is a great time for us to do a plug on, please get your vaccinations. Uh, you know, being proven to be efficiency, like over a year in and year out, like mumps, measles, smallpox, polio, right? Uh, just to name a few. So for those of you that are sitting on the fence as to whether or not to go out and get your vaccine, well, go get one. Uh, this is a you know, public announcement for, uh, for anybody out there who has still not got their vaccine. Um, please, if you're not doing it for yourself, then please do it for somebody else. Well, then uh, you'll be very interested to hear that I am one of those people that have not yet got my vaccine. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So <laughs> you're, you're speaking right to me. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm not, I'm not against it. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be one that's going to tell people that they, you know, I'm an anti-vaxxer and, and all that kind of stuff. I just... For me personally, my Lisa has her vaccine. My daughter has her vaccine. All personal choices, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to push you know my opinions on anyone, right? Uh, but for me personally, I just want to see a little bit more data, right? That's I want to see the the, the long term you know uh, effects of it. Um, there's been there's been studies in this in the states. I was actually reading yes yesterday on on uh, the CDC uh, that it's uh, that the uh, the Pfizer and and the Moderna are causing swelling in the heart uh, in some cases. Um, you know, just stuff like that, right? Just to see, you know, what happens. I just wanna be more educated. Uh, there, I know there's, there's early adopters in, in everything. And there were some people that, you know, the very moment a vaccine came out, they ran and got it, right? And, and in that case, it happened to be AstraZeneca. And there was all kinds of adverse effects uh, to that. And to the point where now, you know, the states, they don't even recognize AstraZeneca as a vaccine, right? So if you've got AstraZeneca, you have to go and get Pfizer or Moderna or something. There were Justin. slight cases of blood clot clotting. Yes, very, very slight cases. But yeah, yeah, no, was there was issues with, with pregnancies. There were slight issues. But I mean, I appreciate where you're coming from. And it's, I find there's a lot of incredibly intelligent, intelligent people like yourself that are still not doing it, but I think we need to set an example because could be a carrier, could be, you know, I just think in this day and age, uh, you know, they've done a lot of back end research on vaccinations for decades, right? So, uh, Andrew, please go get your vaccine. I will, when I'm ready. Yeah, okay. Not, be not because someone told me to, <laughs> right? When, when, you know, when, when I, I'm when not I telling you what to do, I'm just making a suggestion, right? So. <laughs> When, when there's sufficient data that I feel comfortable and, and uh, you know, I, and again, there's going to be, there's going to be, you know, the, the, uh, like the flu shot, you know, people have, you know, millions and millions and millions of, of flu shots are done every year. And there's a very small handful of people that have a, a reaction to it. Right. And, and that's just the way it is. Moms, me, all that kind of stuff, all the vaccines, there's, there's a small case of that. Um, so I'm not saying that I'm looking for, you know, a perfect score by any stretch of the imagination. I just want to personally see that, you know, a lot of those other vaccines for me personally, and again, I'm not trying to sway anybody in any, in any way or form. Uh, they were, they were, they were um, developed research over a much longer time frame. They had a lot more trials, et cetera. And sure. the COVID one was really like whipped together in, in months. Right. Um, so for me personally, I just like, you know what, I think it'll probably be fine in the long run, right? I would, if I was a betting guy, I would bet more that it would be fine in the long run than it wouldn't be. But you know what? Um, I, I sanitize everywhere. I wear my mask everywhere. You know, it's, it's, uh, I do all the things that, that I'm supposed to do if the vaccine never existed. 
Uh, some people that are like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm vaccinated. Boom. All precautions out the window. You know, <laughs> I don't really care. Fact of the matter is you can be a carrier if you're vaccinated. Yeah. So for, uh, for anyone that has chosen not to, you might be like, well, it's your own fault. Okay, fine. If you're going to play that game or what about the people that are under 12 that, yeah. uh, that can't get, right? to, yeah. or you give yeah. it to another vaccinated person who mm -hmm. then has some kids at home that they get sick right so yeah. i think that as, as much as it's nice to have stuff open up again i still i think that precautions like i still man i go through like a tub of hand sanitizer like a week almost uh clorox wipes you know um i i i, I now buy boxes of uh, face masks just the disposable ones because it's it's easier and and you know you lose them and i always have one handy right i always have them right but um anyways this was not supposed to be <laughs> no, no 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 and it's funny because where that where uh, my head went when we started talking about this i'm like i think this is now something to be added on the list to not talk about right it's like oh it gets awkward you didn't talk about like politics religion yeah. Yeah. and now we can add exactly. vaccines to it right and ironically we're going to talk about politics on the show today too um but media right? media gets a hold of things whether it's the vaccine they get a hold of uh, politics, of course, they get a hold of real estate and, and there's a story to be told there. And then it doesn't always give uh, consumers the information that they need. They're not getting that firsthand experience. So I think it's important that, you know, um, there has been an election that's been announced for September 20th, which is earlier than your standard election, right? Is Typically, that what it is? I didn't yeah, even September. know. It. I, it's in yeah. September? Yeah, September 20th. Like okay. two weeks after Labor Day, like legitimately two weeks after Labor Day. Wow, that is yeah. insane. Okay, so full disclosure, I'm not a liberal fan, but full disclosure, I wear my blue proudly. Yeah, I, that is a bonehead. I mean, I get what they're doing because they're really trying to, you know, not give well, anyone time to prepare. They probably did a totally. poll. They're probably like, hey, our numbers are probably better than they're ever going to be right now. Yeah. Let's just throw it out there and, and you know, there's a vote tomorrow right uh, yeah can we do it tomorrow yeah. yeah um man okay so anyway interesting okay cool next very interesting not to go yeah, down now I, I think that uh real estate is going to be a very very hot topic in this year's election both Aaron O'Toole and Jagmeet Singh they're voicing the same thing in terms of uh you know um what we can expect uh you know where Consumer confidence is going to be down. There is a housing crisis right now where the demand for homes for not only for, for buying, but for rental is extremely high. Um, you know, we've seen across Canada where basically prices have gone up over 30% during the pandemic yeah. fueled by historically low interest rates and the demand for, for more space, right? Fuel, fueling, uh, fueling the housing frenzy. So I think that the reality is is you know um the people are going to throw the liberal party under the bus saying that they they didn't do enough right they didn't do enough to kind of spearhead this topic i mean i i think i think another major major issue i have is uh the fact that they've taken a lot of soldiers out of the middle east to kind of like uh just let the taliban run wild i think somebody like an aaron o'toole with a strong military background you know, there's a lot of soldiers out there that dedicated their entire careers, the better part of 20 years for, for helping to, to deal with that major, major issues, right? And they're now dealing PSD. A lot of them have committed suicide. And now we're basically just saying, oh, we're just going to allow the Taliban to kind of run free. So I know we could talk more about the housing, but I wanted to vent that as well, too, that uh, I think that's incredibly frustrating that with all the work that our soldiers are first line, the first line of first line, you know, that we're, uh, we're kind of dismissing um, what's happened over the last 20 years, all the hard work. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you kind of touched on two things there. Two topics. Two topics. So the first one, the first <laughs> you one. You know, I do that a lot, right? Yeah, so my apologies. And, and that's rambling. I need to comment on both. Um, you know, the first one, you know, you had said, you know, there's going to be some people that 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 will will voice their concerns about the Liberal Party not getting out in front of the the housing crisis, et cetera, early enough. You know what? Again, I said it beforehand. I'm not a Liberal fan. I will not be voting for Justin Trudeau. Um, but 
that being said, I don't think that any party would have been able to to see that coming. Definitely. Uh, I don't Definitely. think that whether it was the Conservatives in power or NDP or Green Party, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, right? No, I, I think the end result would have been the exact same. And it, it's easy, you know, being on the other side of the fence. And I know that, you know, red does it to blue, blue does it to red. It doesn't matter. You know, anytime that something bad happens, the first gut reaction response is, you know, well, the conservatives did worse. So it's almost to excuse it to say, okay, well, it's okay now because the conservatives did worse before. Let's, let's try our best as Canadians to always be striving for a better country and a better outcome and a better mm -hmm. government and a better accountability rather than saying, I will, I will only ever vote blue. I will only ever vote red, right? And I don't even care how bad my government is as long as they're, they're wearing the right colors. Mm -hmm. You know, personally, I think that's an absolute crock because at the end of the day, I'm Canadian, right? And I'm always looking for accountability in government. And I don't care if it's, if it's the liberals in power or it's the conservatives in power, if our leaders are doing a piss poor job, why are we not holding them accountable? And why is it always that it has to be, you know, why, why is it always that it has to be, you know, the only ever, the only way to, to, to affect change is to vote the other party in. I don't even think that that's necessary. Why are we not as Canadians stepping up for like a degree of reform and saying, you know, uh, I don't know, like, I don't have the answer. And maybe that's, you know, that's maybe part of the problem too, you know, because I'm not going to, I don't have a lot of time and, and energy to, to devote on, on that topic. I'm not a politician. I don't ever, ever really necessarily want to be one. But at the same time, I want, uh, I want an effective, an effective system. I want an effective government. And I want accountability personally at, at the high, at, at every level of government. Right. When when there's a scandal that happens under at any flag, I don't care what color the, the, the party is. Why are those politicians not being held accountable? Why is there not? Why is there not, um, you know, uh, uh, legal charges? Right. Why is it? Why is the Why is the RCMP not stepping in? Well, because it's all politics and I know you and you know me and I'll shake your hand and I'll rub your back and blah, blah, blah. Right. I think that's that's BS personally. So. Uh, so talk, to talk on like, you know, whether or not the, the housing market frenzy could have been, you know, could have been dealt with better. I don't know it necessarily could have because everybody was predicting all like all the experts, the economists, CMHC were all like predicting uh, a, a dip this year. They thought that COVID was going to take a, a big slash out of the housing market. Well, mm -hmm. boy, weren't they wrong. So when you're leaning on all your advisors and all your experts and they're telling you that there's going to be a slowdown. Do you really need to put a lot of energy into that? No, right? So, and then flip side, part point two, uh, yeah, I think that's total BS that they're pulling out uh, of, of Afghanistan, right? And, you know, I don't have like any direct friends that, you know, were, were killed overseas, uh, but I have, you know, friend, like uh, one, of, one of my sister's friend's brothers uh, was, one of the, was one of the first people to die in a roadside bomb. Right. Uh, so like, I know the family uh, of, of people that have lost people over there. Uh, I spent five years in the reserves. There was a bunch of people from uh, my unit that volunteered to go over there. And I can tell you firsthand when they came back, they were different. Yeah. Right? And maybe it was because it was six months of, of constant adrenaline. And mm -hmm. now all of a sudden it's that, and now it's just calm and you like, you're, it's like, you know, it's, it's coming down off of this make massive high the whole time. Um, but they were very different and stress, maybe not call it high, but yeah. Well, yeah, but no, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, yeah. you know, when you're Adrenaline. like turned on all the time yeah. and then you're, and now it's just, you know, Hey, what are you going to do? I got to go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. right? I gotta, I gotta pack a lunch, you know, like that's now that's your biggest concern where a second ago it was like, am I going to survive today? Um, yeah, they, 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 it came, they came back different. Right. And, and they would only really, they be, they ended up forming this little group. I don't think it was net intentional, but it's almost like in, when I, I talked to a couple of my buddies that opened up a little bit more, because of course they come back and everybody hammers them. Like, what was it like, what was it like, what was it like, you know, um, the, the one thing that, that kind of came out that was fairly consistent was nobody understands. 
nobody understands except for my brothers and sisters that were over there with me that experienced it themselves. Mm -hmm. They understand. I can talk to them. They get it. Nobody else gets it. Everyone's going to come back and be like, yeah, I understand what you're going through. Yeah, because you know what? I had a friend that died once. That's not the same. You know, um, so to pull out now and say all of that 20 years, all of those lives lost, actually physically lost, all the all the lives, you know, that that are lost because like of the livelihood, because the relationships have broken down because of P P uh, PTSD. All for nothing. I don't know, man. That's uh, that's a hard pill to swallow. Well said, well said. I mean, they just dedicated a, a large chunk of their lives to, you know, to, to give a lot of freedom, a lot, lot of opportunity for everyone else. I mean, I think of equality in the way that women are treated and it's, it's just really sad to know that, um, you know, why wouldn't we commit to that? I think that's something that needs to be addressed. And, you know, it's, it's just not fair that, you know, they, they come back, they've done all this work for our country. The Americans have done so much work. And then now we're just going to kind of leave it by the wayside and allow the Taliban to, uh, to, to run a little more wild, which, which is a scary thought too, right? So um, yeah, sure. kind of opening up a wound there. Going back to the, uh, to the election, so September 20th, I'd like to talk a little bit about where we see the markets going. Uh, you know, it's, it's end of August right now, we're before Labor Day. And, you know, you and I talked about this a little bit before the show with, you know, let's discuss what typically happens after an election, right? And you, we're used to an election that's typically, you know, three, four weeks later than this in a year. Right. So, you know, what I've found throughout my career is after election, you're seeing consumer confidence is quite low. We're all trying to figure out, well, what, what's changed? There's talk about uh, foreign investors tax. Like I've heard numbers like 20%, right? So everybody's kind of waiting to see the dust settle and how this is going to affect our markets, right? Uh, I think that there's other things that you and I discussed uh, that are gonna be potentially addressed like uh, auctions and bid process. Um, ironically, we agree on that. I think it is uh, a good thing to implement for Canada. I think it's something that needs to be systemized and something that you and I can talk about, but there should be some form of formal system where let's say you and I want the same house, okay? And there's 10 other people and we get it down and it's just, there's just a handful of people where you then actually know who's, what, what position you're in and what the amount that's ahead is right now. Yeah. This, this blind bidding, this asinine, you know, realtors sending people back for an extra 25, 30, $50,000 and basically it's a slandering of our profession because it's a blind bid. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to send the top four uh, offers back to better their offer. Okay. So who's to say you weren't already ahead by 20, 30,000. And then you've gone and told your clients, well, would you like the opportunity to better your offer? And, you know, so to have some sort of electronic system or some form of formal panel where you would know, you know, in this day and age, how is that not already in place, right? Well, because the our industry is pushing back, right? You probably got that that um, was it Korea or Oreo that sent out the email uh, a couple of days ago saying, you know, that it's an attack on you know our freedom of choice and and yeah. you know pitting buyers against sellers. I couldn't have disagreed more with that email mm -hmm. that came out, and that's a, that's that's supposed to be our governing body. I think that was one person that didn't do a poll uh, of what, what, what it's, it's, it's uh, members thought and just threw it out there as if, as if that's, that's the way it is. Uh, again, not a liberal fan, but, I, it, but I agree with that. I personally, I, I think I'm more for an open system than I am yeah. for this blind bidding. And right now, I mean, <laughs> You keep attacking me, Ross. I'm I'm one of those realtors that goes back and I, and you're thirty thousand dollars ahead, and I'll go back and said, "Is this your best offer?" And my yeah. reason and my reasoning is is that uh, I've been at that table so many times 
that I think dude's got the best offer and he's going to clearly win it or she's going to clearly win it. And then second or third or fourth jumps up and beats them. So then I never gave that guy an opportunity to improve. And now I'm the jerk. No, we all, we all, depending on where you, your position, I think it's nice to know that you're currently in first place. Okay. Um, you're, you have a clean offer. You're good right now. Just so you know, there are still two or three other people that are bettering their offer. Would you like the opportunity to yes. better your offer? Not, not, Hey, we're going to send back all of you to get me more money. And even if you're already in first place or you're just behind first place, you're, and, and your offer's cleaner than this one has conditions. I just, I don't, I don't think it's fair to, to the, to the con consumer entering the market, right? There's, there's a lot of people out there right now that are two, three homes deep that are, you know, they're a little bit later on in life. They've done very, very well for themselves. And they're, you know, the seller typically is in control. They dictate the closing date. They dictate more or less how much money they're going to accept or, or they don't have to sell it. Right. The, the buyer has basically has to win it outright. They might not get approved by the banks and so on and so forth. So when people are playing games with the, you know, with their, their future, their, their, their family's future, then I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Um, you know, and, and there needs to be a governing body that this is, this is the system. And again, we've talked about New Zealand, Australia, do we go to a proper auction? Do we go to a bid? You know, does it continue the way it is, but there needs to be some form of electronic system, electronic system that lets you know your, your position. I think so. Yeah, we were exactly. We were talking about that before the show. Um, and I think, yeah, going to like, so I, I got a buddy that's down in Australia and if I understood him correctly, they literally stand outside the house in a, in a bit of a mini mob um, and they do an auction like that. Um, right on the front line. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to go and drive over to the house and just sit there like old school. Like I'm really loving the digital signature kind of thing where I can submit my offer. I can. You don't want to be an auctioneer? You don't I, want to be an auctioneer? I don't. I don't <laughs> want to be an auctioneer. Um, you know, but yeah, but like you're saying, right? Like, so right now we register our offer in like Broker Bay. Uh, it comes in. Does, does it have the 801 attached? Right. Why can't that be? Why can't that be an open system that that well, I mean, every realtor would be able to see that. Right. So when I'm submitting an offer as an agent, I can go through and see that, hey, I'm twenty thousand dollars short. I thought I was pretty good. I made a pretty good estimate on what the yeah. market is. I see I'm 20 grand short. Go back, talk to my clients. They say, OK, we'll do twenty five and everybody can see how yes. that plays out. Need transparency. Right. right. And then you have like a I don't know whether you have a deadline or you do it until everybody's tapped. Like, I don't know. But yeah. Um, I think you just do it till everyone's tapped because that's the way we do it. Now it works. Now the argument is going to be that it's that it, you're not going to get as much money for your, your sellers. And while I can, I can see that argument. I disagree because the number of times that I have spoken to agents that say, I don't want to submit an offer because I don't want to get into multiples. The problem is, is that everyone gets so bloody emotionally attached, not rightfully so. Uh, and then, and then the, the, you know, the carpet gets pulled out from under their feet. Oh, you didn't get it. Right. And then, and then they have to wait a whole day to find out when are they going to, um, uh, you know, when are they, when are they going to, when are they going to find out what it's sold for? And in, in, a, in a number, sometimes they say, oh, I would have paid that. I thought it was going to go for way more. Yeah. Right. So they didn't even enter the bid. Yeah. Right. And, and then uh, furthermore, someone says, sorry, I'm going to ask one more point before yes, sir. I give you a chance to, to take over. You know, what if somebody's in second place and they thought they had it? Right? I thought, like, to your point, I'm not, I don't need to pay anymore because I'm pretty sure I have it already. I'm good. Yeah. Right. And then they didn't get it. And I would have paid that. Right? That, that's happened with Lisa. The, the agent never came back and, and gave her an opportunity to improve. And she thought she had it anyways. He's like, well, you should have, you should have submitted your best offer. Right? Yeah. You're at the table. When I submit my offer, there's two offers. Now there's seven. I thought I had it. I didn't know the other ones necessarily came in. There's not good communication. Right. And I would have paid more than it sold for, but I, there was never any communication. I love what you're saying. I think um, when it comes down to it, 
uh, transparency, the same rules, right? I don't like the fact, and this could be a, um, a topic for a future episode, but one system, you know, one MLS, one, but having that's the good. same. I thought, we were, I thought we were done talking about politics. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's real estate politics. That's, yeah. that's not, that's a smaller picture, uh, but the same rules, transparency, like how can one realtor dictate these are the way I do um, an, an offer date. This is how I do my bidding process. Like what I typically do, which I think is the way that it should be done is, you know, we're going to allow everyone to submit their offer. I'm going to give everyone the opportunity to better their offer. And then you let me know, like, I'm going to let you know where you stand. If you're still in the contest, if you're out of the contest and making sure that it's fair. And until you decide that you're, you and your clients, sorry, you've still got conditions. Do you have a bank draft? You're not even remotely close for money. You've kind of, you're not no longer in the contest, right? But in terms of if you have a system like this and you even knew what people were pre-approved for, so then you sell the home and it doesn't, and it doesn't even sell because the people didn't even, weren't even approved for that. And then we're dealing with like a deposit check issue and defaults. Like, no, you know what they're approved for. Here's your pre-approval. You're entering into the contest. This is what you can't afford. How high up do you want to go to win this house? And everybody knows what's going on. And we're not cheating uh, people out there that, that don't need to spend an extra 10, 20, 50, $100,000 on a home or a piece of land, whatever the heck they're buying, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've been there, I'm sure, but I've, I've had uh, an agent blow number two out of the water by 50 grand. Easily, easily, right? yeah, yeah. And, you know, and there's gonna be a give and a take, right? So there's gonna be some people that don't sell for as much and there'll be others that will sell for a lot more. But just to compliment what you said, that guy that's already ahead 50 grand and then you're sending him back for more money? Well, I'm not saying you, I'm not oh, saying yeah. you. Well, no, but well, again, like, so uh, there's the argument to be made. Like at the end of the day, listen, I, I justify it by saying I was hired by my seller to get them the most money possible. Yeah. And in this, in but this market, ethics involved too, right? We got to be looking out for what's fair. Say it again. There's ethics involved too. We got to be looking out for what's fair. Like we're not, our job is not to protect the buyer. Our job is to protect the seller. But I think there's a point, there's a point in time where it's like, yeah, that's just not ethically correct to send the buyer back for more money. Well, listen, I'm not, I'm not saying like if the, if, you know, first place is ahead by 50 grand, second place said, I, I, that's as much as I'm going to pay. Yeah. And you still go back to first place and say, Hey, can you get, will you give me more? Uh, no, you're right. I'm, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Good. If, that's where I would struggle. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't keep going back to the dude that's just way ahead already. And there's no chance that, and, and you already know for fact that no, yeah. nobody else is coming up and going back and getting more. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I've had someone be, be in first place by 10 or 15 mm -hmm. grand. And I say, listen, just, and you talked about this, you said this as well. I go back and I said, I've, I've, I've talked to the next three. I said, you're, you're in the lead by, you know, a, a, a decent margin. And again, you can't tell anybody, but you're in the lead by a decent margin. However, I have spoken to second, third and fourth place and they're all improving. So I yes. don't know if they're going to make that jump to beat you. So I'll just let you know, they are improving. If you want to talk to your clients and just to make sure that you get it, I would yeah. hate for you to lose it for a couple of grand. Right. Totally. Yeah. And, and, and it's their decision. Right. And that, and, and that, that can, that can turn out to be like, okay, we're improving by 2000 or they can come back and say, okay, we're improving by 20. That's not on me. That's on them. They That's had a discussion true. with their realtor and they made a discussion between, between the, you know, the two or three or four of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And they presented that offer to me. I have a clear conscience at that point. Yeah. No, it's funny. I'm like, I, I like this conversation because this we're giving perspective to everybody out there listening. And I think, okay, so just to, so right now, the way that we're having this conversation, it's going to create conflict with what, what's going to happen to our markets over the next four weeks, right? There is going to be, we, we probably won't even hear about the uh, elections until after Labor Day. 
Like we're going to see some ads on TV and we're going to see a little bit more on the news, but it's going to get really ramped up those two weeks prior to, to the election. Right. So I think consumer confidence right now is going to be miffed with well, what the heck are the markets going to look like? What are they introducing? Who's going to be in power? So, you know, and then I do anticipate it to be a crazy start to early next year. Like it's hard to say 2022 already, but I think that we're going to see a really, really crazy start to 2022. The dust, the dust will have settled. People are getting back to normalcy, hopefully. Right. Um, but I think great opportunity for people entering the market right now. And I think investors, they've got an opportunity as well, too. And you talked about investors a, a couple episodes ago where don't expect to get these crazy returns, but I, I just think there's going to be less competition over the next September, October, November, you know, into December. I think the next four months should be quieter. Yeah, uh, I can see that. I can see it kind of slowing a little bit. Uh, I've, I, the number of people that have reached out to me and said, what do you think the market's going to be like next year? What, are you, what will my house be like next year? And I'm like, well, you know, my crystal ball is broken right now. But, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I don't know. Again, so you go back and you say, okay, what are the, what are the experts saying, right? What's CMHC saying? What are all the economists saying, et cetera? Uh, you know, they're, they're expecting, you know, a modest a modest 2022, right? Like somewhere in around the three, four, five percent mark, they're saying. Only 15 percent? Right? <laughs> oh, that's all that's saying it? No, I'm joking. I'm saying oh. only 15 percent versus, you know, 2025, like we faced during a pandemic. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like, so I think that's kind of low. And, and if I go back and I say, well, the, these same experts are saying, uh, these same experts are were saying that that we're the the, the housing market was going to come down this year. Yeah. Um, you know, and then we had a we had a thirty percent price increase. Like, how wrong can you be? Um, so, how wrong are they going to be next year? And and to your point, like, there, there's there's a I think there's a lot happening on the horizon. Okay, so so a few a few other things. So you've got uh, you've got the borders opening back up again. Mm -hmm. Um, I was doing a search on the internet and, and it wasn't exactly for this, but I ended up seeing this anyways. Uh, the, the border, the, the borders at the U S uh, Canadian border are at twice the normal rate now that they've opened up all these Americans trying to get into Canada. Um, and I think that that is going to be the case all around the world. Everyone's now the border has been closed or heavy restrictions for such a long time. The floodgates are going to open and, and Trudeau already said, that you know to expect a massive increase now i think that they were originally looking for like a 200 to 300 thousand um uh, people per year immigration policy uh, if i remember correctly he upped that to to 500 thousand. and if you look at real numbers that that two to three hundred was actually or that 250 to 300 was actually closer to around the 500 thousand, because yeah. he was talking about uh uh like immigrants like permanent residents like people that are moving here that doesn't account for work visas. That doesn't account for student visa. That doesn't account for travel. All those people have, need a place to live mm -hmm. when they come here. So a student, someone that's coming over on a student visa isn't considered an immigrant because it's temporary, but they still take a seat. They, 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 they are, are bed, right? They still take a house off the market. And a lot of those students are wanting to become citizens, right? So they come here as international students. Next thing you know, they're becoming a citizen. Right, they end up sticking around. Exactly. So if we if we if we can extrapolate that a little bit and say, okay, if, if 300,000 300, is the is the is the kind of like the benchmark, but real numbers are five hundred thousand. Totally. If five hundred thousand is the benchmark, seven hundred, seven fifty, is that the new benchmark, or is that is that the new reality rather? So I think that is. I think that's realistic. I think we're probably letting in closer to a million people in our country than we are three four hundred thousand, right? So and, and, and those numbers, even though we do a census every four years, I don't think those are legit. Like right now, our population in Canada has just gone over 38 million. And let's face it, everybody's going to Vancouver, Montreal, or Toronto, right? Yep. And if we talk about right now, we also have a major issue with uh, construction. New construction, things are not happening very quickly, right? You look about that corridor, we talked about this before, from you know Ajax to Niagara Falls, and it's filling in really, really quickly in the QEW, heck, all the way from where I am to where you are, right? Like you look, it's it's filling in between Milton and uh, 
Oakville Burlington pretty damn quick in our lifetime. That's going to, there's a lot of good farmland there, but that's going to get filled up pretty quickly. Well, right? basically 400,000 by 2040 Milton, right? Yeah. We're at like a, what? hundred and, I don't know, 130,000 maybe now, 140,000. Is that it for Milton? I don't know. They don't have the numbers posted, but like they're, they say, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a farce. It's more like over 200,000 in Milton probably. I don't know, maybe. So they, they say, um, what do they say? They say like, what do they say? Three, three or 3.5 or four families per day move to Milton. Well, I remember those first four or five years I was in real estate. It's like, yeah, Milton's the fastest growing city in, yeah. in Canada. Yeah. Like for yeah. a few yeah. years, right? Yeah. Like the thing about Oakville, Burlington, um, they're not that large demographically. Like the, the density of the actual land, it's not that large. And then the expansion for, for new development, it's really not that big, right? I think Flambro, and we again, we talked about this Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo. There's a lot of juicy land up there that's going to get developed. But going back to new construction, uh, cities are taking long longer to allow for the development plans, right? Uh, builders, well, they've, had, they've hit their head against the wall during COVID for development. So now we're not having new construction built as quickly. Yeah, we have delays right? with, with, with materials and everything like that, right? Like we're, 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 we're building our labor, house. Right? Yeah, we're building our house. Actually, labor hasn't gone up, thankfully, knock on wood. Uh, well, it's all been no, the, the supply of labor. There's less, there's less people working trades as, as frequently. They, they could collect their check at home, right? So oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're building our house, uh, rebuilding our house uh, this this fall slash winter um and uh, we we're told that there's a nine month waiting list on toilets yeah i've right? heard that like, too all kinds of stuff right like everything is backlogged right if you're yeah, looking for something cool stuff a lot of the plumbing things piping um and, and the, the backlogs from through the state somehow where they get it internationally well, yeah, sure like you said, like, like not as many people in the factories or maybe not as efficient use because you have to maintain, you know, distance and you can, you know, maybe they have to work around shift work and then transportation and, and uh, uh, logistics, like stopping at the borders and, you know, all that stuff, right? It's just. And trades people have made a killing during COVID because people have had nothing better to do than, hey, let's get some home improvements done, right? <laughs> in or outdoor, wherever the heck it is, right? So. If I'm going to be locked down, then I might as well have a spa in my backyard. <laughs> totally, right? Yeah. Where's my oasis at? I know, right? So, yes, yeah, people have been doing. Absolutely. Awesome. Very cool. Um, well, how are you feeling? <laughs> I, I feel like that was just a nice kind of like wrap up kind of ending kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> feel natural, right? We, we could the, the, what, what was somebody told me recently, which is a great line, the, uh, the perfect and to a great presentation is a natural close, right? There you go. So. Absolutely. Well, let's naturally close this bad boy and uh, we'll wrap up this episode uh, and we will uh, see you all again or chat with you or listen to you or be in front of you again soon uh, on the next one. Number 20 in the books. Bam. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>